Right then, it's Sunday evening. It's about half past seven, eight o'clock. So what else would I be doing other than unloading a car from a trailer? So I don't have a social life. Anyway, I've got another one. Zenith Blue Aero Kit Coupe Manual. I'm gonna get it off the trailer and have a little look around. Look at that. That was about a minute and a half getting that off the trailer, according to the video. Can't recommend one of these highly enough. Brian James trailer. Anyway, let's get back to the car. So this is a Zenith Blue factory fitted aero kit. Another coupe manual non summary My brother. Coupe manual non summary factory fitted aero kit. Didn't think I'd have one in this combination again so soon after the one in the previous video not long ago. Anyway, it's a car that I had before. It was taken in about two years ago and um, the customer brought me back up, said he was selling it. Would I be interested? And I always like to take in a car that we've had previously because one, I know it's gonna be a good car. And two, it takes me a long time to comprehensively write the adverts and go through all the paperwork and get it all detailed nicely. And it's already been done once. So it might sound lazy, but it's relative. So I can copy and paste the previous advert and just add the things that the car's had since. So look at this, a Porsche with a roof that comes off on the channel for a change. It's a Carrera Forest, obviously. Midnight blue, Metropole blue leather interior, which is a really good combination, I think, with the matching um, blue soft top. It's done 69,000 miles, full service history and all the rest of it. But yeah, it's a nice spec. It's nice that it's got the matching hard top still with it. Sports hardback seats. Switchable exhaust as well, which is a really nice extra. So there we go, let's get that inside and have a look what's needed. Right, it's Tuesday morning and we've got the Carrera 4S going up on the ramp. We're gonna get underneath, we have already inspected it, but we're gonna get underneath and just walk through the bits and pieces that we're doing because we're doing quite a lot of work to this car, so it's worth filming and showing you what's what. So I'll see you under there in a minute. She's up, and to make sure we're as professional as possible, put a whiteboard up and made a little list. So starting from back to front, so I don't forget anything. The clutch has been done recently, a couple of years ago. For some reason, they didn't do the IMS bearing. You can see the rear main seal is wet. So we're gonna do the IMS bearing and the rear main seal. The clutch will be fine. It's only done, I think, two or 3,000 miles. That'll be detailed in the advert anyway. Um, so yeah, that's the first port of call today. Secondly, the back boxes as ever, have got corrosion along the seams, so they're gonna be removed and professionally re-welded. We could change them for aftermarket ones, but as they're the switchable Porsche exhausts, I think it's better that we have those fixed. What have we got next? Major service, it's overdue one. So we'll do a major service, all the filters, the fluids. Um, and the spark plugs, sorry. We're doing the coil packs as well. Again, just not been changed in a few years. While we're there, we're gonna do the coil pack heat shields. They arrived today. Uh, right, moving to the front of the car. When you look at these cars, you look at the front, I mean, they don't look too clever, but you, you could think you could get away with that. Those discs don't look too bad, but always put your hands down the back because the back faces suffer the most wear. If you look at that, that is dreadful. So new discs and pads going on. Uh, the top mounts, bump stops and bearings, the buzzword once again. Bump stops perished, <clears throat> but more notably, the top mounts on this car are actually squeaking. So when you go over bumps and stuff, it's a squeaky noise that sounds like it's coming from inside the car on top of the dashboard. So we're doing those. The sill, the, the brake line along the sill, 
is a little bit crusty. It's, 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 look, it's good all the way along until you get to this part here where it's secured on the car. And it must attract, you know, I don't know, water must just sit behind there because they always seem to go a little bit worse there. So we're going to protect that. The air conditioning condensers. Somebody has fitted a new one to the near side. I say new, probably two years ago or so. But the other side wasn't done. It's common practice to do them in pairs if they're both old. As you can see, if you look back there, that one's wet back there and the aircon isn't working. So we've got some condensers to go on. And lastly, the power steering ferrule that you've seen in previous videos. If I can get it to focus on that, there you go. So it'll be repaired onto that. So that's all, quite a long list of work there. That'll be on the ramp for a couple of days. Right, we've got a gearbox on the stand out of the car and I thought I'd quickly just film and show the hole <laughs> that the IMS bearing comes from. So there it is. And on the bench over here, if you wouldn't mind kind of getting out of the way, oh, nice is <laughs> there's the old little puny bearing that comes out and causes so much misery. And here's the nice chunky cylindrical one that will be going back in its place. Someone would also kindly kind of bodge silicon around the IMS seal to try and seal it up. So we'll seal that back properly. But yeah, there you go. There's the difference. Okay, it's Saturday afternoon. So of course I'm down here messing about with the Porsche. And I wanted to run through something that I found with the car that I missed upon inspection. Now, occasionally when I'm inspecting a car on a driveway, I will miss something. Um, it doesn't happen that often anymore. Um, but something peculiar I can miss. It won't get missed when it's back here in the workshop and we've now picked up on it. And that is something strange going on with these wheels. So yeah, I went to change the tyres. We put brand new Michelin Pilot Sports on the front. And of course, then you're focusing on the wheels and looking at them in real detail. And one of the fronts, this one, this is where it was spaced, was sitting outside the arch further than the one on this side. And we had the same going on on the back. I had one wheel that was sat way too far in the arch and on the other side, it was absolutely fine. It was just within, you know, about an inch where it should be. The chap had these wheels refurbed after buying them from us, buying the car from us. I think he paid about 650 quid for the pleasure. And although the paint's nice, they've made a monumental cock up here. They have put, <laughs> these are split wheels. So you undo all these bolts. <laughs> You undo all these bolts around the outside and then that inner piece comes out and they're refurbed separately to get that two-tone color. One on the outside, you can do it diamond cut or you can chrome it and they've had them chromed. Anyway, they've taken the wheel apart, clearly. Carefully put that down. And they've muddled up the inner piece. So I've got one of the wide rear wheels with the front wheel's inner piece on, which has got a less offset on it and vice versa. So I'm gonna have to take these down to my wheel refurb people get them to split one wheel and swap it over to the correct front one. Because I was getting a bit confused when I was looking at these in a bit more detail. If you look at one of the wheels, it's showing a rear wheel of 7.5J, which is miles out. That's the width of a front wheel. Anyway, I'm glad I got to the bottom of that. I was searching, starting to search the internet for a set of wheels, but that's sorted. Anyway, let's go over the car now. So I guess we'll start at our favorite place. Look at that, amazingly, we've got bump stops in good condition and the top mounts are good too. So they've obviously been done at some point. Front brake discs, they're not new, but they've got plenty of life in them. There's barely a lip there at all. Pads the same, plenty of life. Move around to the back. Brake discs and pads are new. The coil pack heat shields look absolutely fine. They're not all nastily corroded and needing replacing. It's had coil packs a couple of years ago, so they're all good. We've got stainless steel exhaust back boxes. One thing I do want to do, I've just spotted, which is kind of annoying me a little bit. Maybe I'm being too OCD. The side skirt's just a little bit away from the side of the car. If you can see, just stones have just got in there. I think what I'm going to do is have Dan Take the side skirts off both sides and there's clips along the bottom. I'll show them in a second and just replace all of them and get that fitting up a bit nicer. Just remove all that stone debris down there. Come around the back of the car. We've got a new alternator that he's put on. It's also had a new starter motor. Made a list there of the things that he's done during his ownership. 
Again, same thing this side. If you look on the skirt, it's just got stones caught behind there. So yeah, we'll take both those off and have them fitted up a bit nicer. Let's get the car in the air. Look at the condition of that paintwork. I can see myself like a mirror. You put new wheel bolts all around as well. You have those wheels refurbed. So starting at the back and working forwards then. Now look how lovely and clean that is underneath. Not much in the way of surface corrosion whatsoever. Now if we have a look at the rear main seal area, this at the bottom of the bell housing is where wetness will kind of gather and leak from. If the rear main seal or the IMS seal are leaking, that's nice and dry, we've got no problems there at all. However, if you look behind, we do have wetness here. Now, this looks to be coming from the camshaft chain tensioner seal. So behind here, you can just make it out as a little aluminium sealing washer. Remove that, replace that washer, and that will solve that leak, we'll clean all that up. Moving forward, as you've seen us do before, we've got a new air conditioning pipe along this seal. So we've done that within the last year. Other side, we've got a recent brake line you can see along there. We've got new control arms and tuning fork arms on the front, both sides. He's done those in the last 18 months. Relatively recent air conditioning condensers on the front, no wetness, no damage. So the air conditioning blows ice cold. So yeah, a really well sorted car that, that. We haven't got to do a lot of mechanical prep work to it whatsoever. We're gonna give it a service. We're gonna fix that minor oil leak, sort those wheels out, which by the way, I looked at the paperwork, he paid 830 pounds for the pleasure of those so-called wheel specialist people messing those wheels up. So be careful who you use. I'm not gonna name and shame them, but be careful. Now the main selling point with this car, I touched on it before, is the engine rebuild that it's had. So on the 4th of the 11th, 2016. It's had a major engine rebuild with these people, Marquee 21, for £9,272. So that's probably the main selling point with this car, other than the really lovely spec that it is and the meticulous care that it's had. So yeah, I'm going to get it down now and uh, get these wheels sorted. Okay, it's Tuesday morning. I've got the 4S back on the ramp here. Don't know how I feel about it at the moment. It's all stripped down and looking like a car being broken for bits at the moment. I feel much better when you put it back together. Um, we've got a new air conditioning condenser on this side. The other side, as we spoke about before, has been done recently. So usually it's common practice to do both together, but as that one was absolutely fine, we haven't bothered renewing that one as well. We've got new brake discs and pads on the front. It's a lovely sight. Um, to the rear of the car, it's had a full major service. All the fluids have been done. The spark plugs have been done. Coil packs have been done. Coil pack heat shields we've put on as well. It's just nice to put those on. They're only about 30 pounds from Porsche, so why not while we're there? As you can see, we haven't got a bumper or back boxes. The back boxes have been sent off to be uh, repaired along the seams. Unfortunately, they're not here, so I can't show you what that looks like. Um, we've put new struts on the engine lid. That's much better, that won't fall on your head while you're trying to check your oil level. Uh, I think that's about it. The list feels bigger than what I've just noted, but. Cleaned up the, uh, the brake line on the passenger sill, as usual. Uh, the power steering ferrule has been done. Yeah, that's our lot. Um, we found something else. The clutch is just creaking slightly. It's coming from the, uh, the spring behind the pedal. So we're replacing that as well. That's to be done this morning. Yeah, that's our lot. There we go. Can you put the car back together now, please? <laughs> Got the Zenith car coming back in for its service, etc. Oh, look at that colour. As you've just seen, we've got the Zenith blue car up on the ramp. It's having its work done. Dan over here has found a couple of other little bits we're doing. The rear upper suspension links, we look up here, I've got excessive play in these bushes. So we're going to be replacing those, both sides. He's just, just removing the oil now. There we go, that was done a year ago. But he has done about 6,000 miles during that time, so hence it's that colour. Sounds nice, doesn't it? 
There we go, so we've cleaned up where the oil leak was coming from, replaced the seal on there. Let's hopefully that'll solve that issue. Zenith car is still on the ramp. As you can see, we've had the skirts off and we've discovered it's rubbed the paint off here. We're actually rubbing on the front and it's causing some surface corrosion. So of course we can't fit it back up now. That's gonna to have to go off to the body shop. Have that whole seal done along there. We're gonna do the other side as well. It's not as bad, but it's got a little bit just here. So both sides done. Um, and also while we're at it, the skirts themselves are stone chipped here. That'd be near the front wheel. So we'll bring those down and have those done as well so they'll look better. The service has been done. The door lock uh, mechanism has been done. So the window's dropping at the right time. That's it. Oh, and the arms. I'll show you the arms that we've done. This side's had two. Nice new shiny arms. One there, one at the back there, because those bushes inside there had excess play in them. And this side needed one. So there we go. The car's nearly ready, but it's not going to be ready for a few more days now because of that paint. Right. Can people watching this video please settle something for us? Now, I think those wheels on that car, if they were silver, however, my other half over here reckons that these wheels look better. Now, I'm going to leave those in the car because they were originally specced with the car, but I think the others look better. People, please comment and uh, agree with me. All right, cheers, bye. Good morning. We've got the back boxes back for the Carrera 4S. They look really, really good. And it's back together, happily. That was stressing me out having that car all in bits like that. But yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. I've got it out this morning. It's going for an MOT. I'm gonna take a bit of film down there. But yeah, it's had loads and loads of work, this car. Look at that. I do prefer them without the roof on, but you know, look, the weather's not great. It's been drizzling, so we'll leave that on. Right, let's go and get the MOT done. There we go then, I've been for the MOT. What do we reckon? Reckon it passed? Yeah, of course it passed. Flying colours, no advisories. I mean, we're 99% sure that'd be the case anyway, after the amount of time we'd spent on the car and the amount of work that it's had done. You never can be quite sure. So yeah, 12 months MOT. As you saw, the MOT tester, I know him pretty well. He gets underneath and likes to list off all the things he can see that we've done to the car during prep. Um, there was a few other things that we did to it that I forgot to mention in the, in the video when it was on our ramp prior. And that was, I didn't mention the bump stops, top mounts and bearings. I was filming on the whiteboard and showed it on the list, but I didn't mention it, so they've been done as well. Also a couple of little things, I said we'd done the rear engine lid dampers, we'd done the ones on the front for the bonnet as well. 
and I also put a uh, number plate bracket on the front as well they just sometimes look a bit untidy or get cracked you can get those cheaply from Porsche about 20 quid so yeah the car's all good to go now it's a really lovely thing it drives really really well feels really really tight I'm actually not that partial to a convertible usually which people have probably noticed from our stock but I do like the Carrera 4S in a convertible and that's for two reasons one it's a stiffer chassis so chopping the roof off doesn't kind of undermine its handling ability as much as it does on a normal Carrera because you've still got the stiffness of the chassis to compensate for losing the stiffness of the roof um, and secondly I like the look of them in a Carrera 4S convertible I just think they look really well particularly from the rear really wide kind of hips with the roof cut I just looked I think it looks nice oh he's barreling down so yeah, right, the car's ready for sale. I'm gonna get it back now, and give it a last quick clean, and it's actually already sold. So somebody popped down to the showroom prior to any of the prep work commencing, actually. He saw it just as it come in, and he left a deposit there and then, um, and that was it. It was, uh, it was spoken for. And then the day after, I actually had the person who bought this car brand new ring me up wanting to buy it. So the person that spec this car and its build sheet from you rung me up and wanted to buy it, but unfortunately and disappointingly, I had to say to him, I'm sorry, it's already sold. So um, it would have been nice to reunite them. But then again, the chap that has bought it, it's a nice chap and he really loves the car. So it's still a nice sale to have. Anyway, I'm going to get it back now and we'll get on to the Zenith Blue Aero kit car. It's Saturday morning, we've got two cars going out today. One is the lovely Zenith Blue Aero kit car. All the work's been done, we will go over that later. I'm running it down for an MOT now, and then the customer's coming to pick it up, like I say, so let's get down to the MOT centre. Car's up, MOT nearly done. Nice underneath, isn't it? Yeah. Manual here. What do you reckon, in your professional opinion, Andy? Good one back then. Oh, it's a very nice car. <laughs> okay, but then Luke, you know me, I like, I like Porsches, I like, I like all fashions. I like this car. Wheels look better now, the, the right way around, don't they? The mate, the wheels look excellent. Right. It, it is a lovely car. It's a lovely colour as well, isn't it? And there's no. You've done the IMS on this as well, haven't you? It's been done previous, and it had an engine rebuild. Really? Okay, so all the work's done on the car. The MOT was absolutely fine this morning. Give it a little talk through. Skirts are all done. Looking lovely. Yeah, the door shuts as well this is a handy tip you can get these gaskets so you get corrosion around these door strikers because that material is different to that material we had that sprayed for the customer and you can buy these gaskets they're from a volkswagen passat <laughs> i can put the uh, item number in the description for that if people want to do that interior is all looking lovely the wheels have been swapped over so they look right now we've got new tires on the front you saw the new arms underneath we've had my mechanics fabricated this mesh for the front to protect the air conditioning condensers. So do you want to feature in this video briefly or not? Oh, this is Steve, the new owner, and also the previous owner, and the guy that knackered <laughs> the old engine. <laughs> no, so Steve owned this car about 10 years ago, drove it across Europe, flat out by the sounds of it. He's had an engine build since. He saw it pop up online and here he is buying it back. What do you reckon? Forever and a day. Yeah. yeah. So th Fantastic. So there we go. Nice little story. Over the moon we are. Cool. Just get back to it. Be this, this is his lovely wife doesn't want to be in the video apparently. Although it's okay to film me. You were filming me a second ago. <laughs> All right, cool. I think we'll call it there, shall we? 
I think I've spoken about everything. And we've also put a cool running thermostat in it for you. So if you go to Europe, it will run a bit cooler as well. Headlights. Yeah, we cleared up the headlights as well. We've spoken about the paintwork. We did the middle bit of the spoiler as well on the back. Do you remember there was a little bit? Of, there, was a, there was a little bit on the spoiler. I think that's a lot. I kind of forget. Yeah, go on, give it a little rev. I did put the GoPro camera in the car for the customer's first drive back in the car that he owned about 10 years ago. Um, unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties and there was no sound, so hence the voiceover right now. Anyway, the customers that you've just seen, Steve and Amanda, they owned the car 10 years ago, like I say, and Steve used to use it as an everyday car. They put thousands of miles on that car. Um, they did some European road trips, um, going across Germany and France, I think it was, he said, uh, and they planned to do that again in the car. Um, so yeah, really happy to kind of reunite them with it. They've been watching the YouTube channel and Steve said he couldn't believe his eyes one night. He was watching the YouTube channel and that car, his car just popped up for sale. He recognized it straight away, some certain features about the car. And yeah, I got an email from them in the morning. It was about one o'clock in the morning when he saw it. I got an email from them straight away. And then first thing in the morning, half past eight in the morning, they were on the phone to me. I think you've got my old car. Well, I know you've got my old car. I need to come down and see that car. So I think it was about midday, they were in the showroom looking at the car. It wasn't ready for sale at that point. It was still being prepped. It was on the ramp half in bits, um, but they were still delighted with it. We couldn't go out for a test drive because it was in bits. We couldn't even start the car up. Um, but yeah, they left the deposit. They wanted a couple of other bits and pieces done. So we were already doing the paintwork and stuff that we spoke about previously, but they wanted that mesh in the front that you saw to protect the air conditioning condensers. And they wanted the cool running thermostat. That was just to allow them to go across to Europe make sure the aircon is not going to break while they're out there and be stifling hot in the car and just to make the car run a bit cooler with that low running thermostat. Um, there's a couple of other bits you heard us talk about. So they wanted me to have another go at clearing those front headlights. They've gone a little bit yellow. Um, so we redid that for them and they were happy with that. So yeah, they've got a really good car there. It's quite a nice story. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video. <laughs> See ya!